Greetings everyone. Today I am going to show you how you can train Flux and use Flux on cloud services if you don't have a powerful GPU or if you want to speed up your training. With Massive Compute and also RunPod, you will be able to use the Kohia, Guai and train amazing Flux models with under one hour by only using $1.25 per hour by using 4x GPU. 4x GPU is not mandatory, you can also use 1x GPU, but I will show you how you can properly use multiple GPU to speed up your training. Not only that, I will show how you can start Swarm UI in the RAM pod or in the massive compute and use it on your computer, generate images very fast, do grid generation and compare your checkpoints very fast and decide the best checkpoint both on the massive compute and both on the RAM pod. So I am going to show everything in both of the platforms. I will show how to rent multiple GPUs and do training on multiple GPUs or on a single GPU, but this is not all. I am also going to show you how to upload and download your checkpoints, your training models very fast to the hugging phase uploading 12 gigabytes these lora files to the hugging face took only two minutes with my amazing scripts downloading them doesn't take much longer as well so if you want to learn how to train flux and use flux privately on cloud providers this is the tutorial that you need moreover i will show how to install and use forge web ui latest version as well so either by using the amazing swarm ui or by using the forge ui you will be able to use your generated LoRa checkpoints very fast, very efficiently on both of the RAM pod and massive compute platforms. But please, before watching this tutorial, make sure you have watched the main Flux LoRa training Windows tutorial because I have covered all of the details there. There will be less details in this tutorial. So make sure to watch that one, then watch this one to learn everything perfectly. As usual, I have prepared a very detailed post instructions where you will find all of the information and the links that you need. I will begin with showing how to train and use on massive compute. However, there is one requirement both for massive compute and for RAM pod which is watching this Windows tutorial because I am not going to repeat everything that I have shown in this tutorial. This tutorial has 74 video chapters. It is prepared very well. So please watch the Windows tutorial to learn how to use Kohia in general. Then watch this tutorial to learn how to train and use Flux on cloud services. So our latest configuration and the installers are shared in the version 21. When you are watching this tutorial, it may be a higher version. Usually I will put it to the very top and also in the attachments, click this link to download it. Extract it anywhere you want. You can extract even into your downloads. Let's extract here. Enter inside the extracted folder and you will see massive compute and RAM pod instructions i will begin with massive compute as i said then next will be ram pod so if you are interested in ram pod you can just look at the description of the video and jump to the ram pod section however i prefer massive compute because of the several things that it has so it is up to you to use either of them so we will open the massive compute flux instructions txt file all the steps that we are going to need are documented here. First of all, you need to have a massive compute account. If you use this link to register, I appreciate that. Let's use this link. Since I already have registered, it is already logged in. Register and login. Then you need to set up some billing. If you get some errors during this stage, you can click here and chat with the support. But it is so straightforward. Probably you won't need. It also supports crypto payment as well. Then we go to the deploy here and we are going to deploy our cloud machine. So everything will run on a cloud and it will not use our computer. We are going to rent any number of GPUs that we want. In this tutorial, I am also going to show you multiple GPU training to speed up the training. So I am going to rent four GPU and then I'm going to select creator. This is super important. Select SE courses. This is our special image where Kohia, Swarm UI, Forge Web UI, a lot of things are installed and we have a special coupon. You see currently it is $2.5 per hour, but I am going to enter our coupon and it will become $1.25 per hour for amazing system which has 192 GB RAM and 1024 GB storage. 
because we are renting four GPU. You don't have to rent four GPU. You can also rent one GPU and train on that. When you rent one GPU, it becomes 31 cents per hour for RTX A6000 GPU. This GPU has 48 gigabyte VRAM. This is just amazing price. This is also not a spot instance, so it is permanently assigned to you until you terminate the machine. But since I'm going to show you how to do training on four GPU at the same time to speed up training, I am going to rent four GPU. Everything is same when you rent one GPU, two GPU, four, eight GPU. It doesn't matter. Everything is same. Just the configuration changes, which I am going to explain. So after that, click deploy. You see currently I also have another instance running with eight GPUs. The coupon will not work with eight GPUs. This is a special given coupon for me by the method compute, but our coupon is valid up to four GPUs at the same time. So you can also rent two X, three X, four GPUs running at the same time with the same price. Just wait until initialization completed. For connecting to the remote machine, I'm going to use TinLinch client. Click here, download and install it. It is just so straightforward. Then open the TinLinch client like this. Before starting to using it, click options and go to the local devices, uncheck all and click drives, details, add a folder on your computer where it will be shared. You can set it read and write or read only or not exported. I am setting as read and write so I can transfer files. This synchronization doesn't work well for big files. So if you have a big files, don't use this. Use your cloud storage like OneDrive, like Hugging Face, like Google Drive. But for small files like transferring the scripts, installers, your training images, if they are not very big, it works very well. And don't worry, I am going to show you how you can save on the cloud, on the hugging face, your generated model checkpoints so that you can later use them very easily. By the way, one thing about TinLinch client is that it has Windows, Mac and Linux versions. So install according to your operating system. Don't forget that. The machine has started. You see the status is running. So we are going to connect, click here. So it is copied, copy pasted here. You see, you don't type HTTP or the port. This is just it. You use the Ubuntu as Ubuntu. This is important and copy the password and just paste it and connect. There is also an existing session. When you check it, it will close all of the applications on the server. So be careful and continue. Machine starting, click start, don't wait. And the machine has started. You will see several things here. You will notice, for example, you can see that we have eight 181 gigabytes free hard drive we have 189 gigabytes ram and currently using only four percent of cpu you can also right click here this is terminal new window this is really important to understand then type nvi top like this and you can see the gpu status you should see as many as gpus you have started i have currently four gpus so this machine is currently started and working very well you will notice that we have run Updaters for Swarm UI, for One Trainer, for Kohia, for SD Forge, and for Automatic 11 Web UI. Then we also have Pinocchio installed here. We have Jupyter Lab installed here. And the starting buttons of these applications are also located here. So these are for updates and these are for starting. So how we are going to move our files here to use them? First of all, I am going to copy the downloaded zip file and move back into my synchronization folder, which is mass compute here. I will paste it here then i will extract it right click and extract this is a zip file so you can extract on any machine without having need any third party then enter inside home and in here you will see thin drives this is the synchronization drive with your computer you can also log in your patreon account and download the zip file on this machine as well just wait a little bit it will fetch the file names as i said for transferring big files this is not good but for transferring small files, yes, it works. And we have the zip file here, Kohia Guai Flux Installer. Please copy this into your downloads folder or desktop, doesn't matter. Don't use anything inside this synchronization drive, otherwise you will get permission related errors. And you will see the copying status here. You see it is copying from my computer to the downloads folder. Just wait for this copy operation to be completed. As you copy more files, it will take longer. And this also depends on your network speed, of course. Okay, you see the copied all the files to downloads. Then let's move to the downloads folder. Let's enter inside the folder. First of all, we are going to upgrade Kohia to the latest version, but we didn't use the upgrader icon here, which is, you see, Kohia update. Why? Because currently 
the flux training is not available in the main branch therefore we are going to switch to the accurate branch and use it therefore i have method complete cohere flux instructions txt which we had opened so open it inside the method compute and copy this command just copy it right click copy or control c and start a new terminal new window and paste it you see it gave me error why because this terminal is not in the accurate folder so what you need to do is go back to the folder where you have copied files home downloads here and in here click this three dots icon and start a new terminal so it will start the terminal in the accurate folder right click and paste and hit enter and this time it will work so this is going to upgrade my kohia to the latest version with accurate libraries and the accurate branch for the flux training but if you are going to train sd 1.5 or sdxl you can just use the run update kohia and start using it so meanwhile doing this let's also download the necessary flux training models to do that in the instructions we have method compute download models command here so copy this command go back to the folder and start a new terminal here and paste it this will download necessary models into your downloads model if you copy something from your computer sometimes it may require several times copy paste because there is a problem with thin lynch client it may not sometimes copy the think that you copy it on your computer so pay attention to that but when you copy something inside the message compute it always works so this will download necessary models into the downloads folder here you see it started downloading and meanwhile the other script is installing and upgrading kohia to the latest version so at this point just patiently wait for kohia to start and the downloader to be completed all right so the files are downloaded and also the kohia started you can see running on local url also it is automatically opened because i said it too i will first start with a single gpu because many of you may like to train on a single gpu then i will show how to train on a multiple gpu so on our patreon post we have the configuration for every config the very best one is rank one obviously so i'm going to start training with it to start training with it go to the lora tab this is super important don't load into the reboot tab otherwise your config will get corrupted configuration then click this icon to load it this is running on a remote machine not mine you can notice the thin lynch client here so once you click here it will let you pick the item so go to the above folder since we copied it into the downloads let's enter inside downloads enter inside the folder and we have best configs here i'm going to load it so it has loaded everything for me this is by default set as for massive compute you see flux one dev save tensor this is already exists there the model output name and everything everything is same as on windows if you have watched the tutorial as i said you will know by now so i will also quickly prepare my data set to show you as well my training data set is here i will copy it into the mass compute drive since it is not weak it will work very well you see this is the data set 11 megabytes then it will appear in here let's refresh this folder you can hit f5 to refresh it wait for new file to be updated then you see my data set is arrived here so i'm going to set my data set hwx man i will do one repeating so output where you want to save it let's click here you can save it anywhere not in thin drive though it is important let's save it into downloads and let's say flux train like this prepare data set i explain in details what are these doing in windows tutorials so watch it and copy info to respective fields however i am going to make my model checkpoints output directly to the swarm ui lora folder so i will be able to use them you can also use forge web ui i will show that too so you see output directory for trained model i am going to click here go to the apps and inside here you see stable swarm ui this is the latest swarm ui not stable swarm ui go to the models select lora and that's it so they will be saved inside here let's delete the logs i don't need them and we don't use regularization images and we are ready so you can save your config and before starting training you can click print training command to see whether there are any errors or not and it says that yes training images are failing for some reason let's see maybe we didn't copy properly data set preparation parameters no it should be somewhere around here yes image folder is supposed to be here 
Maybe there were some error when preparing. Yes, probably it failed to read my thin lynch drive because I didn't copy it. So if you encounter that error, don't get confused. So what we need to do is first move our training files to the downloads folder, then prepare the training data. So let's move it to the downloads folder. I'm not going to delete this part of the tutorial because you may also encounter this error. Okay, so we are going to reset, re-prepare. To re-prepare it. Oh, I didn't give the downloads folder first, so that was my mistake. Maybe it will work with Tinlinch Drive too. Okay, let's try from the Tinlinch Drive first, then we can try from actually let's go with the safe way. So go to the downloads. Yeah, this is my training images. Prepare training data. After that, verify it from here. Yes, it says done. Copy for the respective fields. Okay, it is set. Then I'm going to set the output folder again. So from here, let's go to the apps, Swarm UI, Models, and LoRa. And delete the logs. And save again. And click the print training command. And yes, it shows the setup. So first I will show as a single GPU, then as a multiple GPU, as I said. Let's just click start training. The configs may get updated when you're watching this. It may become better because I'm currently searching for better by the way it shows that i have 11 images which is wrong why because we didn't wait for copying files to the dom last and when i was preparing data set it wasn't full we can see that yes now all files are here so i'm going to manually move them so copy them and go to the dom last flux train image ohwx man you see it is lacking so i will just paste it so make sure that all of the files are fully copy it otherwise it will be also corrupted and you will get error always wait for full copy yes now it should work so let's just click start training again i'm not going to delete any of these parts because these parts are likely the parts that you may also encounter problems and so you will know that what is the reason of problem and it is getting ready okay now let's just wait for the training starting and let's return back to nvi tab which we will monitor the vram usage so it is loading the model right now so the training has started wait until you get like 100 steps to see the final speed because in the beginning it is not displaying the accurate speed because it is displaying every speed so I wait like 100 steps to get the full speed of the training okay it has been 50 steps and it down to as low as 8.5 second it if you find this is still very slow what you can do you can stop training and disable apply t5 attention mask this will speed up hugely with the trade of some quality degrade alternatively what you can do in the method compute deploy you can select a more powerful gpu like l40s this is almost equal to maybe a little bit more powerful than RTX 4090. So go with L40S GPU and you will get much better speed compared to this one. However, it will cost you more and we don't have a coupon for that. Okay, without apply T5 attention mask, you see the speed is hugely improved. Now 4.43 seconds IT, it is almost double speed. And with this way, it will take less than 3.5 hours duration for 3000 steps which is amazing so you can disable this with a little bit of trade-off of quality and get a huge speed or you can enable it and just wait and now it is time to start training with four gpus at the same time so i will stop the training we have a configuration for 4x gpu training so you can just use it if you want just load it and use it it is inside the configurations let me show you you see 4x gpu batch size 1 and 4x gpu batch size 2 batch size 2 slightly improves the training speed but quality will be lower but for people who wants to learn how to set up themselves i am going to show that so what we need to do is we are going to set the accelerate what we need to set is number of processes to all right this is an hack to the flow of the video because i just figured out something when you are setting multiple gpu training make sure that number of processes equals to the number of gpus you have when you set it that way you are going to get almost exactly same number of epochs you see currently i am training for 60 epoch on 4 gpu therefore total 240 epochs 
and I am getting 200 for the epochs. Currently, I am doing a training for a client and I have figured it out. There is not much speed difference. However, what is the benefit of this? With this way, you can set the save every an epochs accurately. So I'm going to save every 20 epoch a checkpoint and it will work as expected. So set this number of processes equal to the number of GPUs you have. If you are training on 8 GPU, set it 8. If you are training on 6, set it 6. If you are training on 4, set it 4. So this is the logic. This is a mandatory multi-GPU. And set the GPU ID. So we have 4 GPU, therefore 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to train on all of the 4 GPUs. From the accelerate part, you don't need to set anything else. So what else changes? When you set the number of GPUs from there, you need to reduce your epoch. So you need to divide 200 to 4 and it becomes 50. It is still same. You can save every n epochs like this, like 25 or like 20, whatever you wish. And we will compare them later. I will show that. Don't worry. And one another thing changes, which is learning rate changes. You need to calculate the new learning rate. How? So there is not a single formula for that. But the formula is usually it is equal to like this nev lr is equal to number of gpus batch size divided by 2 and alt lr so what does this mean i'm going to show you in a moment this is one of the suggested way so our new lr will become our initial learning rate was this so it will become multiplied with 4 multiplied with 1 because batch size 1 and divided by 2 so it will become like this there is not an exact formula as i said you can just load the configuration file but you can also use this if we had eight gpu it would become this or if the batch size were two it would become like this you see this is the logic so whatever the learning rate at my best configuration you can set your new learning rate like this so let's change the learning rate to the new value here and also we have a learning rate here you can also use the configuration directly and you can set a new name, let's say, like this 4x GPU train. Okay, this will be the output name. Change to this and save. And let's see the new speed. By the way, if you apply this, it will become slower again. So it is up to you. If you don't want to get quality loss, you can apply it. But if you need speed, you cannot apply it. So let's see the speed without applying it. This will slightly reduce the quality but hugely improve the speed. It is totally up to you. It is a trade-off. If you want best speed, don't apply it. If you don't want best speed, but best quality, apply it. Okay, so what do we see now on the screen? When you pay attention, you will see that it is doing 750 steps instead of 3000 steps because it divided the task into all four GPUs. Therefore, now at one step, we are actually doing four steps so you see the speed is 4.85 seconds per it the speed gain is almost linear we almost got a speed up 4x this is amazing with stxl last time i tested this wasn't the case but with flux we are almost getting a linear speed increase this is just mind-blowing so you can just boot up eight gpus and you will get eight times speed with minimal amount of loss of quality it will be almost same quality i will let this training to be completed it will take total like one hour to train 3000 steps on flux ai this is just amazing and it will cost me how much money it will cost me only one dollar 25 cents for per hour training so this is just amazing this is the most affordable best quality training right now with a very high speed training so instead of the other services you can use the method compute our coupon and train very fast with the maximum possible quality my configurations will get hopefully updated to better versions i am testing the impact of training the text encoder clip large training so the quality will likely to get better after this training has been completed i will also show how to use it on swarm ui and on forge web ui in the method config so let's just wait now all right so the training has been completed now i will show how you can use this generated loras on the method compute and also upload to the hugging face to download later anywhere and use anywhere like in your computer or in any other cloud service provider 
I am going to use Swarm UI and we already have a Swarm UI in our image. So first run this to update it to the latest version. You see it is updating. As you see Swarm UI started with the most updated version. However, I am going to access it from my computer browser to have more fully end usage instead of using inside the Tinlinch client. You can also use inside Tinlinch client, but it is better to use on my computer. So in our post, as you scroll down, you will see that how to use it on Swarm UI. So you can watch the main tutorial I suggested. Also, I have Swarm UI Cloud tutorial I suggested. So you should watch these tutorials to fully learn how to use it. However, I will show how to use it quickly, but I want to use it in my computer. So copy this command. This is going to install Cloudflare and we are going to access from the Cloudflare. So close this terminal, start a new terminal, right click and new window paste the copy it command okay looks like it didn't copy sometimes this may happen so right click new window return back here copy again sometimes this happens with the tin lynch client paste it it enter it will install the necessary package okay it is installed then copy this this is going to generate a public url that i can use on my computer paste it okay it didn't copy again i hate this happens however there is no solution as far as i know okay paste again okay this time works and you see it started on local host and also in a public url so open the public url it will load okay then copy this link go back to your browser okay you see currently it is showing error because the outlook plus is preventing it so i will just refresh and yes, now I can use the Swarm UI that is running inside Message Compute on my computer. So I prefer 30 steps. I have shown it in the Windows tutorial like this. Since it's a big GPU, I'm going to also change the precision. So I enable the advanced options. In the sampling, I select the unit PC and then I select my base model. So you see the models are not here. So let's move each one of the files to the accurate folder. So cut this go to the home apps inside the stable swarm ui inside models inside unit this is where we put the dev model then inside clip we are going to move the e5xxl which is let's go to the downloads again and clip is this one let's move cut it move to the move back to clip paste it yes this may be a little bit task i know you can also use the downloader that i have then we are going to move the VAE file, cut it, go to the home, apps, inside the Swarm UI. This is a one-time thing that you need to do and you learn again models. VAE go into the here, EA save tensor, then go to the downloads. It will take just a minute, cut, this is the T5XXL, go back to home, go back to apps, inside stable Swarm UI, inside models. And this goes into the clip here and paste it. Uh, yeah, I could paste the both clip large and T5XXL at the same time. Then return back to your Swarm UI, refresh the models, and you see Flux Dev appeared. And now I can set also Flux Guidance Scale. I prefer 4. And in the advanced sampling, you can change this to 16 bit because this is a big GPU. So currently, it will generate an image with the single GPU. However, if you have rented multiple GPUs, go to the server, go to the backends. You are going to add several backends. Also, edit this and add dash dash fast. It is making it faster for newer GPUs. So, how are we going to edit? Conf UI self starting edit. Copy this, paste here. Copy this, paste here. Set the GPU ID one. Save. Let's add another one and another one. So, copy this, paste, paste. Copy this, paste, paste, set this GPU ID 2, save, and set this GPU ID 3, save. So it is going to let me use all of the GPUs with a queue system. First of all, let's generate an image with the Flux Dev. And I have amazing prompts to test the checkpoints. So the test prompts are inside here. Let's open the test prompts. I have eyeglasses, so I am preferring the eyeglasses, for example, here. And let's use this one. And let's copy paste it here and let's generate an image so currently it will not apply my lora but i want to see the model generation and it is going to use segmentation so what does this segmentation means it will auto mask the face of the generated image then with 0.7 denoise it will impaint it 
so this is how you can use the swarm ui that is running on massive compute in your computer actually i have shown this in the main windows tutorial so after this all i need to do is apply the lora from here and which checkpoint i should apply let's refresh this you see there are loras and it save it once every 20 epoch however i see that it only train it up to 100 epochs for some reason let's return back to oh by the way the t5xxl model needs a certain naming therefore it re-downloaded it and the name has to be like this therefore it has re-downloaded it so we need to rename this to this file name yeah that is an error we had we can also do that so the loras we have is five let's check out the logs the reason of this okay so it trained it up to 94 epochs it was supposed to fully train it but for some reason only 49 epochs okay this is the image that it generates without our lora let's use the 80 epoch lora this should be pretty good one and i suggest to use fp16 t5 xxl instead of the fp8 which it downloads by default i explain all of this in the main tutorial so you really should watch them and you can go to the server and logs to see what is happening so it is generating the image right now with 1.25 it per second then it will in paint the face and the image generated with an amazing quality so how to find the best checkpoint so go to the tools go to the grid generator and in the first tab select the lora search for loras fill all delete this none one and then in the second we are going to use prompt like this and i am going to use test prompts without eyeglasses this is formatted there is no eyeglasses here so you can use this I have the eyeglasses so i am going to use grid formatted eyeglasses for grid formatting this is the separator just copy this paste here and give a name like test one here save the grid config like test one and generate grid this time it will generate images on all of the gpus at the same time so it will be much faster let's make this run and meanwhile i will show you how you can upload your models to the hugging face so for uploading models to the hugging face i have an amazing tutorial here so go to this link in the attachments you will see that the version 6 this is the newest update i just updated it move it back into your massive compute synchronization folder wherever you have it is here go back to your massive compute tin lynch folder from let's go to the new window let's go to the tin drives mass compute and let's move the file into the downloads here then Control alt d to minimize everything start the run jupyterlab interface you need to have a hugging face account to upload that i already have a hugging face account you can follow me here too it is free hugging face is just amazing i congratulate them i thank them they are amazing let's go to the access tokens i'm going to generate a new temporary let's say delete later and make it right and create a token copy the token this is important then you see the jupyter lab interface started in the tinlinch client so in this interface go to the downloads and double click this notebook file first of all we need to install this is mandatory just click this cell it will install everything to the latest version wait until this cell execution ends after that copy paste your token here like this play this cell once this is just one time necessary and you can set the upload folder and upload everything which i'm going to show right now so let's go to the our page let's click here new model make a model then give any name let's say video tutorial mass compute any name you can make it private so no one else will be able to access it then copy this is the path and i am going to use this one you see very fast new upload there is also single file upload and other ones this will upload everything very fast to the repository okay after we set the target repository and make sure that it is model type this is important i updated the notebook file to have by default model it was data set and verified the local folder path just click the play icon 
and it will start massive upload with a massive speed it is just amazing we will see that it will be completed within like one minute or two minutes for 12 gigabytes of file let's just wait we will also be able to see the progress here it runs the upload in multi threading and it is just mind-blowingly fast compared to the previous upload strategies that we have i just updated this file today to be perfect so the upload has been completed it took like two minutes you can see the logs here then when i open my repository i will be able to see it but this is in the tin lynch client so i can't see it i need to open it in my computer and when i open it and check the files yes all the loras arrived here it took like one minute or mostly two minutes to upload all the files so how you can download them again in another instance of massive compute or in your computer in your computer you can just click this to download to your computer but let's say you started another massive compute instance and you want to download all of them so for downloading all of them very fast again you install the requirements set your hugging face token and in this cell we have an amazing download script so first let's copy the path again from here and just delete this part like this paste it make sure that it is accurately copy pasted and it is like this then wherever you want to download let's download it into home ubuntu apps models stable diffusion you can download to any folder and just click play and it is going to download everything into there we can see it you see it started multi download it is really really fast we will see it completed in few minutes and the download completed it didn't update these messages but once you see the download completed it means that it is completed we can also verify that so where did we download them so home apps apps stable diffusion web ui inside models inside stable diffusion yes all the files are downloaded this is how you can upload and download very fast by using the hugging face with my specially made jupyter notebook file let's return back to our tools grid generator load grid config and load config from here it has been already completed let's open the grid so all the images will appear here currently we will see the comparison of the all the checkpoints it is taking some time to load on my computer because i have a limited internet connection also i can say auto scale to see everything in the viewport from here you see and the images are getting loaded this is the 20 checkpoint it is under trained i can see that clearly this is decent this is 40 checkpoint this is AD checkpoint is really really good so with this way you can compare the checkpoints and decide which checkpoint is best one probably AD will be best maybe the last one the last checkpoint may be the better so all I need to do is just wait for generation to be completed probably not completed yet let's go to the server logs go to the debug and we can see yes it is still generating we can see the progress here okay it says that very fast and we are in painting faces as well okay yes yes this ad epoch is really good so it is up to you to decide which epoch you want i am working on a better workflow better configuration hopefully i will update the configurations once i have them next week hopefully i am going to fully research the fine tuning and fine tuning will be many times better hopefully if you also use a better data set you are going to get a better results than me especially with the expressions and this model was trained with in one hour actually lesser than one hour so the grid generation has been completed it generated 195 images each one was 48 steps and it took only around 22 minutes if your grid doesn't show everything just refresh the page and it will show everything then decide the best checkpoint that you want 20 40 60 80 and the last one so it is up to you it is personal to decide which one you like most and you can also generate more frequent checkpoints and decide the very best one as a last step i am going to show you how you can use the forge web ui on the massive compute so we already have a forge and forge updater first run st forge update so you will get the very latest version of the forge so it started updating everything 
then it will start to forge both locally and also on the gradual leaf share we are going to use with gradual leaf share so this is the latest forge you see currently my model is not available yet so i will go to the apps where i have the models you can cut also or copy paste it doesn't matter both works so inside the unit we have the flux model let's copy it or let's just move it to the forge web ui it's inside apps inside the ST web forge web ui inside models and we put the model inside here you see then we need to put the loras here actually we need to put all the models here first so let's go to the apps and stable swarm ui models and inside clip we have clip large and t5 fp16 so let's copy both and it allows me to copy selection from here let's go to the apps and let's go to the web forge models and stable diffusion and select and it will copy that it's pretty fast and as a last thing we need to copy the vae file i also have an automatic downloader for the models if you want to just download but it will take time to re-download inside vae right click and copy the or move to let's use move to it is easier swarm ui apps forge web ui models and vae and that's it and let's just copy actually this just move it there then click refresh icon here and flux dev appeared we are going to select vae and we need to select the flux from here so the other things will also appear click here actually we need to re-refresh vae text encoder okay i think i was remembering the text encoder path inaccurately so let's move to apps forge web ui inside models yeah text encoder has a separate folder so inside stable diffusion i will move the text encoder so clip large and the t5 right click and move to so just models and text encoder okay select then let's refresh and then yes so select all these three and you don't need to do nothing else go back to here first let's generate an image then we will generate our lora by the way this is running locally so let's connect from the gradio leave share it will be easier to use so let's open the gradio copy the link move back to my own browser so the forge web ui is loading okay so we have the prompts let's go to the folder we had let's go to the prompts and let's open our prompts here for example let's copy this one i'm going to remove segment because there is no segmentation here okay let's use this one i don't change anything else i'll just make the detailed cfg scale 4 and generate now forge is not as good as swarm ui it is good with uh, some quantized models but if you are using on a high vram machine it is not as fast as the swarm ui if you ask my opinion especially when you use lora with default generation it is fast not that bad by the way we should also close the swarm ui but i didn't close it and it doesn't have automatic qa system for multiple generations okay so it is here and the image generated actually let's go back to the swarm ui and instead of closing its cmd i will just disable the back end so this will free up the ram okay now how we are going to use the lora go to the lora and refresh currently we don't have any lora so we need to move the lora files as well so let's go back to the apps swarm ui inside the models inside lora just select everything right click and move to this move to is very useful go to the forge models and lora and select so it will move every file immediately because it is moved like cut and paste refresh the folder and loras appeared for example let's use this lora and let's go back to generation and generate yes it's patched to lora accurately and now it is generating the image so this is how you can use the forge web ui with your trained loras the forge web ui is like automatic 11 web ui i assume that you already know it and the image generated where it is generated it is generated on our computer and yes it is here currently it is not face in painted but you can use the extensions and everything so this is it i hope you have enjoyed now i am going to move to the ram pod tutorial part
Okay, now I will start showing how to do the same training on RAMPOD. I am assuming that you might have skipped the method compute part. So we download the zip file if you haven't downloaded yet. It will be also in the attachments. Please also read this post very carefully always and watch the Windows tutorial. Don't skip it. Enter inside the zip file extraction. You can extract it with WinRAR or just the Windows itself. Just right click and extract. And you will see RAM pod install instructions. This is very important. Just double click it. It will give you all the instructions. Please register with my link if you haven't registered yet. It is here. Then login. I assume that you have registered. Sign up is free. Then you need to set up your billing at your billing information. Then go to the pods. Okay, in here, go to the deploy. You can use either community cloud or secure cloud. You can also use network volume storage. I have a full tutorial for network volume storage as well. If you are wondering it, you can watch it. Network volume storage link will be here. I'm going to update the zip file and the instructions TXT file. So you can just double click and watch it. Then the selections here matters. You can pick any GPU that you want. We have a configuration for each GPU. But my suggestion for you would be like this. You can rent. 4x a 40 gpu it is a very cheap one you see and it has 48 gigabyte vram so it is pretty decent price it is not as good as massive compute but it is decent and let's also see its training speed so i'm going to rent 4 gpu you don't have to rent 4 gpu you can even rent one rtx 3090 or one a 4000 and you can train but i don't suggest them pick at least 40 gigabyte to get the maximum quality not the maximum speed but maximum quality and the template selection matters i train on pytop 2.1 template if you train on other templates it may not work i cannot guarantee that so select this template to not have any issues how you select it click here change template type pytorch and select the 2.1 version from here you see it is kudo 11.8 and then edit template this is also super important edit the template at port 7801 this is for swarm ui make the volume this bigger because we are going to save checkpoints and download models like at least 200 gigabytes to not have any issues and you can set the container disk to 30 gigabytes to not have any issues as well. I'm going to show both Swarm UI and Forge Web UI and how to use it after training with Kohia GUI. So set the overrides and we are ready. Then click deploy on demand. After that, go to the my pods. So we have started 4xA for the GPU. As I said, you can rent multiple more GPUs, more powerful GPUs. You can also rent one GPU. All of them would work. However, the speed will change according to the GPU that you have. This is an affordable configuration. It is only $1.4 per hour. It was $1.25 on massive compute. And I wonder the speed difference between two GPUs. So we are going to see that. Okay, wait until the connect button appears and it appeared. Click connect and click the Lab port 8888. Wait for this interface to load. If it doesn't load, refresh this page and click connect button again and the Jupyter Lab interface loaded. So go here and click this icon, go to your extracted folder and load everything. Okay, just select everything. It is not a big file, so you will be able to upload all of them very quickly like this. Then in here, find the Rampot install instructions. First of all, we are going to install Kohia GUI, proper latest version. Copy this part, copy it, Control C, open a new terminal like here and paste it and hit enter and just wait then meanwhile it is installing the kohia first part you can go here you see the models that we are going to use copy them open a new terminal and paste it so meanwhile it is installing kohia it will also download the necessary models to save your time meanwhile you can also upload your training images so click here to upload your training images i suggest you to upload as a zip file so i will just right click my images here zip them like this then click here you cannot upload folders from there you can also use rampot ctl i also have a tutorial for that go to the folder where your files are here they are here just upload it in the bottom of screen you will see uploading so you need to wait here to be uploaded uploading from here is slower than the rampot ctl or you can upload files to the hugging face and directly download from there with wget the download speed of the RAMPOT is very poor compared to the massive compute. That is also one another reason that I 
pick massive compute over RAM pot. You see, it is only downloading with like 15 megabytes. It was like 150 megabytes on massive compute. The installation speed is also slow. The Kohia was already installed. We just upgraded it on the massive compute. We also need to install Swarm UI and Porch Web UI on the RAM pot, and they are both installed in the massive compute. So since this is very slow pot, I'm going to just terminate this all of the downloads what i'm going to do is first refresh here we need to delete already downloaded files open a new terminal rm r you can also fully wait it flux one yes you need to delete these older files because they are now corrupted if you don't wait proper download they will get corrupted okay so let's see if we have other ones okay there's t52 okay and do we have another one download started so if you're files get corrupted you need to delete them like this and read on that okay so what i'm going to do is this one this is a good alternative start download separately copy this open a new terminal and start it then let's also copy this open a new terminal and start it make sure that all downloads are fully completed copy this and start a new terminal and download it okay the final one is here copy this open a new terminal and start it okay so it is going to download every file separately and with this way we get a better speed also you see when you start a download second time it may get a speed boost i don't know why this happens but this time it is 60 megabytes per second instead of 15 megabytes okay nice so we are downloading with a decent speed now and the files are downloaded the kohia is getting installed right now my images are also uploaded you see here i will right click and i will say extract archive so they will be extracted into here like this and we are going to use prepare data set future of the kohia to prepare our data set the installation on rampot is really taking huge time still downloading model and the installation is at this part still i have to wait it fully then we are going to execute the second part Okay, the first part installation of the Kohia has been completed. It took more than 20 minutes on this pod. It may be faster on some other pods. So now we are going to run this second command. This is super important. Don't forget that you need to run it on a new terminal. So it is going to terminate running instance, update libraries and start again. So this is mandatory. Don't forget it why i am doing two steps because i am upgrading scripts i am adding new stuff so therefore this is mandatory to do and once flux becomes in the main repository merge it into the main branch master branch i am going to update my scripts don't you need to worry about them just use the scripts as i show so now it is starting the kohia guy you see we have four gpus and how did i know the first part was completed you see we had running on local url so once you see this you will know that the first part has been completed the installation of the first part and the second part is now getting completed the kohia is starting usually the hard drives of the rampot are being very slow for me that is another reason why i picked the massive compute unless you rent a very powerful pot the hard drives will be slower but the negative side of the massive compute is that you don't have a permanent storage there but on rampot you have that so that is the main advantage of rampot so the kohia started we can access it the gradually you could also access it by setting a port here 70 861 because it starts this port by default but accessing from the gradually is also perfectly fine and safe okay so the interface has started it is same as using on windows but i will show you how to set it up on the ram pod first of all this is the lora training therefore we are going to use lora tab if you load the config in the dream boot tab it will corrupt it so go to the lora and select the config according to your gpu so let's see the configs are uploaded no because it doesn't upload the folder so click here go back to your downloads folder and we have the best configurations here i am going to start with rank one file which is the best one you see rank one so how we are going to give its path right click and copy path then go to configuration put a backslash always put a backslash to the beginning in rampo like this so this is the path then click this icon it will load everything if it doesn't load click this icon it will refresh 
so you see everything is loaded now what we need to change is we need to set the model path as a beginning so our model is set here you see this one right click copy path put a backslash here paste and we are set we also need to set our training images which i am going to show right now so go to the data set preparation type your instance prompt and class prompt i explain everything in the windows tutorial we use repeating one because we don't use regularization images very set my training images they are inside here you can open each one of them to verify they are uploaded accurately then right click copy path put it here like this you see i put a backslash it is one repeating destination where i want to set my training images let's say workspace train folder like this and click prepare training data check the cmd window and see that done creating then click copy info to respective fields and we are set for this part which file name you want to give let's say test one so the output name will be test one then we also need to set the other file paths which are let me show you vae path so for vae path this is the path so copy path and put a backslash and paste it you can also do this so i copy this paste it like this you see copy this paste it like this because i have downloaded the files with the same names and everything is set currently apply t5 attention mask is selected this improves quality but reduces speed so let's see the single gpu speed first because you may be training with single gpu let's save and click start training you can also rent rtx 4090 and use a lower vram configuration like rank 3 and it will be faster than the training on a40 the quality difference is minimum with rank 1 and rank 2 we are training in 16 bit with the other ranks we are training in 8 bit the very low ones this starting from rank 5 we are using a single layer so it is getting lower quality but the difference is not very big i explain everything in details in the patreon post so read the post very carefully so you see it is loading the model files it is going to start training to monitor the vram usage i will open a new terminal i will install pip install nvi top like this then i will type nvi top like this to start it nvi top and it is started we can see the vram usages of the gpus right now so it is starting on a single gpu on the first one right now and we can monitor the status of the training here so you can verify the folders are they accurate the captions everything i explain all of this in details in the windows tutorial that is why it, you should watch it the initial model loading on rampot is also always slower you see this is how fast it loads it is going to load like 28 gigabytes and this is the speed very very slow that is why i also prefer massive compute but it is up to you you can rent a much more powerful port on rampot and get much better speeds okay so the training has started initially the speed that it displays will not be very accurate wait until at least 100 steps to get the more accurate speed of the per step so currently it is 10.30 seconds per it so let's just wait a little bit to see the accurate speed okay it went down to like 10 seconds per it and it is still very slow so how you can speed it up you can stop training and disable apply t5 attention mask this will hugely speed up the training with a little bit of quality loss so it is it's straight off let's see the new speed so with apply t5 attention mask is off we are getting over 100 percent speed up it is now 4.85 seconds per it it is slower than rtx a6000 on method compute but this is a decent speed and can you further speed it up yes that is what we are going to do now with multi gpu training so you can directly load up the 4x gpu batch size 1 or batch size 2 i suggest batch size 1 because it is better quality and use it however for those who wants to set up themselves i am going to show that right now so stop training go to the accelerate tab here and set number of processes to all right this is an hack to the flow of the video because i just figured out something when you are setting multiple gpu training make sure that number of processes equals to the number of gpus you have when you set it that way 
you are going to get almost exactly same number of epochs you see currently i am training for 60 epoch on 4 gpu therefore total 240 epochs and i am getting 240 epochs currently i am doing a training for a client and i have figured it out there is not much speed difference however what is the benefit of this with this way you can set the save every an epochs accurately so i am going to save every 20 epoch a checkpoint and it will work as expected so set this number of processes equal to the number of gpus you have if you are training on 8 GPU, set it 8. If you are training on 6, set it 6. If you are training on 4, set it 4. So this is the logic. Set multi GPU and set the GPU IDs 0, 1, 2, 3. Like this. And that's it. Now we are ready to use multi GPU. However, there are two things that you need to change. The first thing that you need to change is you need to divide the epoch number to the number of GPUs. So it is going to be 50. And it is automatically going to handle everything for us. Let's save every 20 epochs. This doesn't change with the number of GPUs. It still will save basic number of the epochs. And the learning rate, you need to set a new learning rate as you increase number of GPUs or the base size. There isn't an exact formula. So the suggested formula is new learning rate equal to number of GPUs multiplied with batch size divided by 2 than the older learning rate so our new learning rate becomes like this learning rate multiplied with 4 multiplied with 1 because we are using base size 1 divided by 2 and this is the new learning rate there is also using directly multiplying without dividing 2 or square root and as i said there is not an exact formula but dividing by 2 is commonly used so this is the new learning rate why because we have 4 gpus so multiply with 4 and divide by 2. This is the new learning rate. And let's say RAM port train 4x GPU for this one. You should always save your configuration like this. Save it. And let's start the training. I am still not going to apply the T5 attention mask to see the speed and compare with the massive compute. But I can already say that a 40 GPU on RAM pod is slower than a 6000 on massive compute and it is also more expensive. However, as I said, you can always rent more powerful GPUs such as you can rent 4 L40S GPU and it will train like in 30 minutes, maybe faster with maximum possible quality. So it is up to you to rent number of GPUs and the uh, certain gpu you can also rent 4x4090 that time you need to use the lower vram configuration which one you need to use like rank 4 or rank 3 to see the speed and you can still use multiple of them at the same time exactly the same settings just the base configuration changes and what is the change in the base configuration with the high vram configuration we train in 16 bit so the quality loss is minimal with the low vram we are training in 8 bit so when doing multi gpu training you will see that the total optimization steps displayed as 750 instead of 3000 why because it is dividing the number of steps equally to on each gpu therefore it will display 750 steps everything will work exactly as same this will be almost equal to as training batch size 4 but this time we will gain linear speed increase when you increase the batch size on a single gpu you don't get such speed increase actually i tested and batch size 2 just a little bit increases the speed nothing like using two gpu currently the speed is 5.25 seconds it and it is getting better you may think that it is same as before but now you see because each time when one step is done actually we are training four images we are doing four step of the previous so you need to divide this number to four to get the actual speed and it is just amazing we almost got 100 percent linear increase so our speed is increased like four times compared to the before with stxl there weren't such speed increase but with flux training on a multiple gpu we are almost getting such perfect linear increase based on the number of gpus previously you had to use sxm machines to get a linear speed increase with multi gpu but with flux you don't need to use such configuration because sxm machines are extremely expensive it is the link between gpus 
with PCI Express link in these GPUs, we are still getting almost linear increase, no performance loss. You see, we are almost getting to the previous speed, but this time batch size is four. So we are training four images at one time, and it is going to take like one hour, two minutes to complete this training. It is just amazing. Looks like the training speed stabilized at 4.95 seconds per IT. So now I will wait for training to finish, then we will continue. And I see that it doesn't use my old GPUs. This is weird. Yeah, probably NVI top is broken. Yes, it doesn't get updated. So let's start a new terminal. NVI top. And yes, NVI top looks like broken. It doesn't display all of the GPUs because this is impossible. Can we see the usage in here? Imports. Okay, it doesn't show. This is weird. However, it shows we are training 750 steps. So it has to use, let's also look at the logs. It should have loaded four times. Yes, I can see that it loaded four times. So it is working, but the status of the GPUs are not accurate. This was accurate on message compute, but in here it doesn't accurate. So don't trust it. Trust the values that you see here. And we are going to see the results at the end. So the training has been completed. 750 steps are completed and it took 62 minutes to train on for a 4D GPU with one of the very best configurations. Now how you can use them, you can download them to your computer and use or you can use them on RAMPOD as well. I will show both of them. So to use on RAMPOD, you can watch this Swarm UI Cloud tutorial. It is amazing. Or you can also use Forge Web UI. Either one of them is works and I am going to show both of them. When we go to the Swarm UI Cloud tutorial, we have a link there, this link. When you watch the tutorial, you will know it. So in this link, there is a RAMPOD installer. You should watch the tutorial if you don't know how to do it. So I will just download this installer file. I will show quickly. So first I will install and run it very quickly. I'm not going to repeat everything in that tutorial. Let's just copy paste. It failed because I didn't upload the file. So let's just upload the file and let's just name it to accurate. Okay, let's just install it. So the installation is getting completed as exactly as shown in the Swarm UI Cloud tutorial for Flux. Okay, so the installation has been completed and the Swarm UI started on the RAM pod. To use our LoRas, first of all, we need to move the files into the accurate folders. So I will move the first VAE file. So cut it, move into the Swarm UI, into the models, into the VAE and paste that then let's move to the workspace we need to move clip large and the t5 text encoder cut it by the way we need to rename text encoder to the accurate name or it will read download it what is the accurate name for the swarm ui i don't know from the memorization but i will look from my computer and this is the accurate name so i will just rename it to this name and yes I just noticed that we did put these two into the inaccurate folder. They goes into the clip, not clip vision. So let's just paste it. And VAE is in the accurate folder. Okay, as a last step, we are going to move the main Flux 1 dev safe tensor file, cut it, move into the Swarm UI, into the models, put it into UNet folder. If you don't see the UNet folder, you need to generate it yourself. How you can generate, you can click here and generate a new folder and name it as UNet. Then let's return back to the models folder, click refresh and it should appear here. Then let's generate a single image. First, let's see the model. Then we will generate multiple images, compare checkpoints. Moreover, since we have four GPUs running right now, we can add more backends to it, which I am going to do right now. So click here to add more backends. I have shown all of this in the main cloud tutorials for Swarm UI. Okay, this is just extra. So GPU ID 1, GPU ID 2 and GPU ID 3. Moreover, you can add a new command dash dash fast. This will improve the speed significantly on newer gpus and then save once you save them it will restart the backends okay let's return back to generate of course since we set the first it is restarting okay let's just wait for backends to load we can always go to the logs and put into debug and we can see yes it is now going to load everything yeah it is starting on each backend right now 
you can see that it is just starting yes then let's hit generate again so it is one current generation one queue to waiting on model load why i do this because i am verifying the models and everything is set into the accurate place then i will use my lora to generate and my loras are not visible here yet because i also need to move them so let's go back to the workspace where is our loras they are inside train folder inside model you see my loras are here i'm just going to select everything then cut them and let's move back into the workspace into the swarm ui into the models into the lora folder and paste them here and image is getting generated almost ready it is also doing in painting because we have segment face with 0 0.7 70 percent denoise in paint with photo of hwx man this is equal to using after detailer r detailer extension on automatic 11 web ui okay this is the base image then let's refresh the loras loras appeared for example let's use this lora ad epoch let's generate okay now it is loading the lora and it is going to generate we can always see in the server logs yes it loaded the lora and it is generating image right now and we can see already preview it is in painting the face right now in painting face is optional however i find it improving the face quality by the way this gpu is slower than the massive compute rtx a6000 gpu and we got an image it is really really good so how you can find the best checkpoint to find the best checkpoint we are going to use tools grid generator and in here first select the lora loras here fill all like this select delete the non lora then i am going to use multiple prompts because we already have prompts return back to downloads folder and inside test prompts we already have prompts for the swarm ui i have eyeglasses so i'm going to use these prompts okay like this and you see the prompt separator is this these two is prompt separator and everything is set let's also give a name to our grid like test one let's also save the grid config like test one and hit generate now this is going to queue the generation on all four gpus and it will generate them like in 20 minutes not like four hours because we are using four gpus even though we are doing 30 plus 18 so for the eight steps for each image it will be done in like 20 minutes not like four hours we will see it meanwhile let's also upload all the loras into the hugging face so we can download into our computer we can use them later at a time anytime we want so to upload models to the hugging face i already have a tutorial here and i already have a notebook file go to this link you see how to save download your models and at this link you will see hugging face upload version 6 this is just updated today click this link to download it then return back to your workspace upload the download it file into here double click and open it now first of all we need to install the dependencies with this cell just run it one time then you need to get your hugging face token to get your hugging face token go to the hugging face also you need to generate a model folder so first generate a model new model everything will be saved here let's say test run pod video you can make it public private i'm going to make it private copy the model pet here and we are going to use very fast new upload future just paste it there then go to the settings go to the access token you need to register an account it is free don't worry and they don't charge you anything they are just amazing click select right give a name test delete to like this and create token copy this this is important go back to here paste your token play this cell one time it will set your hugging face token and now we are ready so you need to also set the lora pet our lora pet is let's find it it is inside swarm ui currently inside models inside lora so right click and copy pet and delete this part and paste it you see it's always starting with backslash and repo type is model this is important whatever the repo type you just generated you need to use it and then just click the play icon and it will start uploading you see it is going to upload 12.3 gigabytes according to the, your pod speed it may be completed in two minutes 
actually in method compute it was only two minutes or 10 minutes 20 minutes but this is the fastest way of uploading models to the hugging face it just arrived very recently so i am keeping everything very up to date and at the same time it is generating the grid right now you see estimated is one hour but it will get better already we have generated like 20 images we can always see the generation speed in the debug you see 1.13 it second this is a really really good speed by the way the upload is slow on the run pod though it was way faster on the method compute okay it hash it first then it will start the upload the uploaded files will appear here which is our repository this is a model it matters whether it is data set or model okay it is saying process it wow it was fast so it uploaded everything let's refresh the files and all appeared here so it took like three minutes to upload everything and we have uploaded all of our models this is just mind-blowingly fast upload thank you so much hugging face you are amazing so we save it everything into the cloud forever until we delete them and we can download them anytime we wish how you download for downloading i also have a new download this one snapshot download you just enter your repo path here and the folder path wherever you want to download for example let's download into the workspace workspace test 2 like this and let's run this cell this will download everything okay it says that there is no directory workspace oh i need to put this into here i'm going to update this script so it will be fixed when you are using okay let's just play and yes it started downloading don't worry on the ram pod we get this error because we are using the proxy but in here all the files will be appearing after a while this is a super fast download it has resume also this upload has resume capability as well i fixed that error and updated file to the version 7 and i already can see the lora files are downloaded so this is huge huge speed of downloading this is how you can save and download later and use grid generation has been completed we click here to open it if not all of the images are loaded refresh the page i am going to use auto scale images to viewport with and now all you need to do is check each checkpoint and decide which one is working best there is no easier way unfortunately so it is a personal thing you need to check every checkpoint and decide which one is working as best then you can use the checkpoint to generate images as you wish i am still working on better workflows better configuration so hopefully the results will become better when you are watching this tutorial i will update the configuration files currently i am searching for training the text encoder clip large model so we will hopefully see a better workflow soon as a final step i will show how you can use the forge web ui on this rampot machine so for using forge web ui on rampot i have automatic installer it is here you see under this section of the post let's go there and in the attachments you will find forge installer this may be a higher version when you are watching so click this link to download it then go to the workspace and generate a new folder as forge install like this enter inside it upload the zip file then right click and extract archive so you will not get confused with the new files it will be a clear one and then you need to use rampot instructions txt file you can also extract it onto your computer and upload so for installing the forge web ui we are going to run this command open a new terminal copy paste it so it is going to install forge web ui into the stable diffusion web ui forge under this folder once you install it under this folder you need to delete this part cd workspace don't forget that if you install it into your workspace then you don't need to delete it so we are going to use this as like this we just deleted the first cd workspace part and we just made it like this so whether you install into your workspace you can keep them whether you don't install it your workspace into a separate folder you keep it like this just wait for installation to be completed okay so the forge web ui installation has been completed to start it now i will use this as i said 
be careful where you have installed and run this command inside it if you have installed into workspace it is fine but if you didn't install into not workspace it will fail yes we are currently failing because of this so i have to make it like this so, so it will directly move into this folder open a new terminal inside this folder and just copy paste it like this pay attention to the paths you will understand them as the time passes and it will help you in long run always you can message me on patreon or on discord server and i will help you so now we just need to wait for start and we also need to move the files so let's move the files while it is starting current our files are inside here models unit so let's move this file into the forge web ui unit it will be inside forge install web ui forge inside models inside stable diffusion put it here let's go back to the swarm ui and models and we have loras let's move our loras okay click first file then while keep pressing shift select all like this cut move back to the workspace into the forge install into the models inside loras lora folder not generated yet so let's copy it later go to the swarm ui models vae so we can just cut or copy go back to forge install stable diffusion forge models vae paste it go back to the swarm ui inside models inside clip this is important move both of them to the forge install stable diffusion forge models and it will be inside text encoder paste here now we just need to copy the loras let's just wait application to start okay i know why it has failed because we didn't install it into the workspace my script of installer has failed we can see the script here it was here so we need to copy this and modify it so how are we gonna modify it we are just going to change this workspace to like this forge install okay this will fix it so let's terminal so you should install into workspace and not into forge install otherwise you need to do all of this and now let's remove this share and start a new terminal okay i had prepared scripts to install into workspace once we installed it into the subfolder it caused a lot of issues so better to install into workspace this is the best way now it's starting but I will not delete these parts of the video because you may always encounter some issues and you are learning how to fix them. This is helpful in the long run and it will help you to understand the concepts what we are doing better. So now we will get a gradual leave share. Second time start should be way faster than the first time start. Even the second time start on Rampot is taking too long on massive compute it is almost instant okay so this time we got a gradual leave let's open it and we should also move our loras so let's go back to swarm ui models lora let's select all cut move back to workspace into forge install web ui forge models lora and paste it here and we got everything and we got the forge web ui so let's refresh and let's select all these three and flux and text to image okay let's use some of our test prompts for example this one i will first generate a prompt without my lora then i will use with my lora okay so i will use 1024 to 1024 and let's generate don't forget to select all these three and the checkpoint itself as i said if you install directly into workspace your forge web UI, you will not have any of the issues that i had however I have shown them so you learn more stuff okay now it is going to generate an image first loading it we can see the vram usage somewhere around here where it is here okay now it is loading the model okay we got the first image generated then we are going to apply our lora let's go there refresh and the lora should appear yes for example let's use this one and generate when you first time generate a lora the forge web ui patches it and for patching it uses a significant amount of vram this doesn't exist on the swarm ui i didn't see in the logs this is a disadvantage of the forge web ui also i like the swarm ui better for using the flux but 
if you want to use Forge Web UI, here how you use it. So the patching has been done, and then we are going to see the generated image. Okay, we got it. Currently, we are not doing any face in painting, so the face quality is not optimal level. But you know how to use the Forge Web UI. It is like automatic render and web UI. There are also other things, and I need to make a dedicated tutorial for Forge Web UI. So I will end the tutorial here. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please keep subscribed because I am going to fully research fine tuning of the Flux, and I bet it will be many times better than the LoRa training on Flux. We are going to see it hopefully. Moreover, I am working on finding optimal training parameters for clip large model when training the Flux LoRa. So hopefully we will get better results compared to what we get now. Hopefully see you later.